We've all seen magnets and experimented with them, but we've never really properly studied what magnets are. Magnetism is a phenomenon that is all around us, but we've never really deeply studied it properly. So put simply, a magnet is a piece of metal with a strong attraction to another magnetic object, and it points in north-south direction when it is suspended freely. Examples of magnetic substances are iron, cobalt, and nickel. And alloys of these substances, for example, steel is an alloy of iron, are also going to be magnetic substances. Non-magnetic metals or non-magnetic substances are uh, such that do not show any magnetic properties, for example, silver, copper, and gold. Each magnet has two poles, the North Pole and the South Pole. Both of these poles are opposite poles and they give the magnet its properties. So when you bring the North Pole of one magnet close to the South Pole of another magnet, attraction will occur because unlike or opposite poles will always attract and like poles or same poles will always repel each other. So when you brought the north pole of one magnet close to the south pole of another magnet, they both attracted each other. But when you brought the north pole of one magnet close to the north pole of another magnet, since they were like poles, since they were the same poles, so repulsion occurred, the magnets moved away from each other. And the same case happens when you have two south poles brought close to each other. How can you test for a magnet? So you can use the property of repulsion between like poles. How you, for example, you have a substance X and you want to know whether it is a magnet or not. You bring another magnet close to it. And if at any point or if any place repulsion is occurring, then that means that that substance X is a magnet. Why can we not use attraction? Because if that substance X was attracted to the magnet, that substance could also be a metal as magnets not only attract other magnets towards each other, but they also attract metals to them. So we can't use attraction to detect a magnet. Now, this is how the magnetic domains of unmagnetized and magnetized substances look like. So the domain is a region within a magnetic material or a magnetic substance in which the magnetization is in one uniform direction. So if you look at unmagnetized iron, iron is a magnetic substance, but here it has not been magnetized. So um, the mo magnetic movements of the atoms are not aligned and they're pointing in different directions. But when you magnetize iron, then the individual magnetic movements of the atoms, they align with one another and they point towards the same direction. But in non-magnetic materials, you have no, po uh, no poles at all, no magnetic domains at all, which is why it does not show any magnetic properties. Now you need to understand two things in this. First of all, there is a geographic north and south pole of the earth, and then our earth acts as a bar magnet, and thus there is a south and a north pole, which is the magnetic south and the magnetic north pole of the earth. Wherever there is the north geographic pole, there's the south magnetic pole. So as you can see over here, the south pole of the bar magnet on the earth is pointing towards the north geographic pole. Now, we have a question. Why does the needle of the compass point towards the north geographic pole? This is so because the needle of the compass is made up of are a magnet. Now, because magnets attract each other, the pointer of the needle is the north pole of the magnet, and the north geographic pole has the south pole of the magnet, uh, Earth's magnet, right? So that's why the attraction occurs between the unlike poles. On the other hand, the uh, opposite side of the compass always points towards the south pole, which is the south geographic pole, because in reality, that is the north magnetic pole of the Earth. So when we were talking about iron and how it was unmagnetized, we can magnetize it through magnetic induction, which is the process in which a magnetic substance becomes a magnet when it comes in contact with a magnet. So over here, you have a bar magnet 
and you have magnetic substances, two magnetic substances, iron and steel. When you will bring a biomagnet close to iron nails or steel paper clips, you must have tried that at home. They will be attracted towards the magnet. And these magnets will now have aligned magnetic domains inside them and they will show magnetic properties. And since opposite poles attract, so this if this is the south of the bar magnet, then this will be the north of the iron nail. And similarly, it will pass on its magnetic properties to all other magnetic substances that will come in contact with it, and it will be able to attract other magnetic substances as well. And in this manner, induced magnetism occurs. So, how do you magnetize substances such as iron or steel? The first method is stroking, in which you temporarily magnetize a magnetic substance by stroking a bar magnet many times in one direction with one of the poles of the bar magnet. So you have this bar magnet, which is a permanent magnet, and you have a steel bar that you want to magnetize. You'll stroke the bar magnet in one direction for a long period of time and eventually the steel bar will become a magnetic substance it will become a magnet and if you use two bar magnets then you are going to have a stronger magnet formed the other method is you by using electricity so you will connect your substance your magnetic substance to dc current as shown over here and when you turn on the switch or you when you let current flow through the wire this is called a solenoid which means that there are a lot of co uh, coils that are in the form of loops and this solenoid when current passes through the solenoid that is wrapped around your magnetic substance the magnetic substance become becomes magnetized and you can see magnetic field lines have formed around it they haven't formed in reality we're just showing them to make it easier to understand now you've magnetized your substance and you want to demagnetize it. So how can you demagnetize it? You are demagnetizing a permanent magnet such as steel. So you're going to heat it till it becomes a bright red and then you'll allow it to cool. It will lose its magnetic properties or you can hammer it. Or you can use alternating current to have that ma uh, magnet lose its magnetic properties. What happens? Firstly, you magnetized it by stroking it in one direction in a circular motion. What happens? The tiny magnets within the material are organized or aligned in one direction. Now, when you want to reverse this effect, so you can hammer the magnet or you can heat the magnet because it disorganizes the tiny magnetic poles that had lined up when you magnetized it. And so your substance becomes demagnetized. Another method for demagnetization is using alternating current. What happens? Alternating current actually means that the current flows in different directions. So first it flows in one direction, then it flows in another direction, due to which the substance starts losing its magnetic properties. First it becomes magnetized and the current changes, then it becomes demagnetized and you are moving that magnet away from the solenoid, from the coil of wires. So slowly and slowly it loses its magnetic properties. The magnetism becomes weaker and weaker and the magnet eventually is completely demagnetized because the magnet is magnetized one way and then in the opposite way repeatedly. So eventually it loses its all its magnetic properties. Now we discussed how magnets show attraction and repulsion. So what are these forces? What is this magnetic field between all of these poles? This can be shown by using a compass and a bar magnet. So if I take a bar magnet and I take another compass, so we discussed that the pointer of that needle is actually the north of that needle. The needle is a magnet and the opposite pole is the south. So when you bring it close to a bar magnet, what happens? Since this is the North Pole, so repulsion occurs and the North Pole of the needle moves as far away from the bar magnet as possible. And when you keep moving the positions, repulsion occurs till a time over here where the attraction and repulsion by both the North and the South Pole are equal. So they cancel out the effect and it's completely horizontal. The needle is horizontal. And eventually then this needle points towards south of the bar magnet 
as they are attracted, they are unlike poles. They are opposite poles and opposite poles always attract. This way you can see the magnetic field lines. They're pointing from north to south. They're moving in the direction from north to south. And you can plot your magnetic field lines using a compass and placing it in different direct, in different positions. So this is how the magnetic field lines will be formed of a bar magnet, but inside the magnet, the field lines will be from south to north. Outside the magnet, it's north to south, but inside the magnet, it's south to north to complete all of these closed loops. These lines will never cross each other and near a magnet, the magnetic field lines are going to be closer to each other. But as you as it moves away from the magnet, then these field lines have greater spaces between them. Now, when you place two magnets together and their opposite poles are near to each other, we discussed this in the laws of magnetism. So opposite poles, they're going to attract. And so the field lines are going to move from north to south. This is how you are going to form the diagram. Similarly, when you place the north and the north pole together or the south and the south pole together, repulsion is going to occur. These magnetic field lines are moving away from each other. They are repelled. And the point in the center, this point X is the neutral point because it experiences no magnetic effect. So if you place a compass over here, the needle will point in no direction. When you place bar magnets in parallel, again, we have a look at the laws of magnetism. So repulsion occurs. The field lines are moving away from each other. Here, attraction occurs. So the field lines move from north to south as outside a magnet, the field lines will always move from north to south, but inside the magnet, they're going to move from south to north. We discussed that iron is a temporary magnet. When I magnetize iron using uh, stroking or the electrical method, it's going to be a temporary magnet. As soon as I switch off the current or as soon as I stop stroking the uh, iron, so it's going to lose its magnetic properties and it, was, it will no longer remain a magnet. So it cannot retain its magnetism. It can easily lose its magnetism. That's why uh, it's known as a temporary magnet. But permanent magnets such as steel, they can retain their magnetism for a long time even after I have switched off the current. Now the magnets that can retain their magnetic properties, they are hard magnets and those that can lose their magnetic properties, they're soft. So we often use the term soft iron for any object that is made up of iron and it is being used as a magnet. Then you have a permanent magnet, for example, steel, and you have an electromagnet that has been magnetized using electricity. And as soon as you switch off the electric supply, it no longer remains a magnet. So the magnetic field is produced using an electric current and they usually consist of a wire that is wound into a coil and we call that a solenoid. Whereas in permanent objects, it's made of a material that is magnetized and it can create its own persistent magnetic field that will not disappear once you stop magnetizing it. For example, the refrigerator magnet that you use to stick paper, et cetera, on your fridge. We discussed what are hard magnetic materials and what are soft magnetic materials. So hard magnetic materials are actually permanent magnets that do not really lose their magnetism, but soft magnetic materials are those that have only temporary magnetic properties. So we're going to discuss how we can use magnets in, day, in our daily lives. We, an example is magnetic screening or magnetic shielding. One of the uses of magnets um, is basically hard magnets or permanent magnets is magnetic screening or magnetic shielding. Now, as the name suggests, magnetic shielding is the process in which we are going to protect any particular material such as our mobile phones or a tape or a recorded tape 
from the magnetic field lines that are present in this area. As you can see in the diagram, we have north and the south pole. And in the middle, you can see with written red that it is a shielded area. Around this, this is the iron ring. Now, the iron ring has more permeability towards the magnetic field lines, which is why the magnetic field lines that are coming from the North Pole are going to be, um, you, you can say, submerged or um, they will go within the iron ring and then they're going to pass through the iron ring in towards the South Pole. They will not enter the shielded area because they will be absorbed into the iron and then they're going to pass out of the iron because iron has higher permeability and higher conductivity of these magnetic field lines. So with this property of magnets, we can shield a particular substance uh, as it can be damaged in the presence of magnetic field lines, which is to summarize what happens in magnetic screening and shielding. Then another application is magnetic storage or storing data in a hard disk that uses magnets. So that is basically the storage of data on a magnetized medium, for example, hard disks or magnetic recording tapes, etc., or the magnetic stripes that you can find on your credit cards. Here you have the disk and this is the magnet that is being used to store the data within this disk. Now there is one rule we use when we talk about current and magnetism that is known as the right hand grip rule. So over here, if you have a straight wire, you will use the curl right hand rule in which if your direction of current flow is as such. Now when I mean that my this is my direction of current flow, it means that that it's moving from the positive terminal. We're talking about conventional current. So my direction of current flow is upwards. I will align my thumb in the direction of current. And now my fingers will curl in the direction of magnetic field. So I pointed my thumb towards the direction of current flow. And now my thumbs are aligned in the direction of the magnetic field. And so you can see that this magnetic field is like this, which means that it is anti-clockwise. So when you have current flowing upwards, the magnetic field around that wire is anti-clockwise. And we discussed the new, when you pass current through a wire, so the electrons, they align together and a magnet is formed, which has its own magnetic properties, its own magnetic field, and it has a proper magnetic domain. So when your current is moving upwards, then your magnetic field that can be donated by a B is anticlockwise. But when you have a solenoid, which is a coil of wire or one that is looped around any plastic core, so if your current is flowing from here, it's going to move like this. So you're going to curl your fingers in the direction of current. Current is moving like this. So you're going to curl your fingers in the direction of current. It's flowing in this manner. And so your thumb is going to point towards the direction of north. And you can see then this becomes our north and this becomes our south. You're going to curl your fingers in the direction of current flow. Similarly, like the coils of the wire, your fingers are going to act like the coils of the solenoid. And so your thumb will point towards the north of this magnet that has been formed when you turn on current. You can see that even clearly here, current is moving in this direction. So you aligned your fingers in the very same direction. And so your thumb points towards the north of this magnet that has just been magnetized when you turned on the current. Here you have the rule for a straight wire and here you have the rule for a solenoid. For the straight wire, your thumb is going to point towards the direction of current, but for a solenoid, your thumb is going to point towards the direction of north. We use dot and cross models to represent the magnetic field or the current. When I use a dot, it means that current is coming out of the page like a point of an arrow coming towards me, like an arrow that is coming towards me. 
so i can only see it as a dot as the point that means that current is coming out of the page current is coming towards me but when i use a cross it means that the current is going into the page or away from me as i can now see the back of the arrow so i'll use a cross over here see over here i have an arrow the current is flowing out of the page and over here the current is flowing in I am using a dot to represent the direction of current. And so if I use the right hand curl rule, so when I point my thumb in the direction of current, my fingers are going to point in the direction of the magnetic field. They're going to show the direction of the magnetic field, which in this case is anti-clockwise. So when you have a dot, you will always have an anti-clockwise magnetic field. The dot here is representing current current is flowing out of the page current is flowing towards me here current is flowing out of the paper current is flowing into the paper inside it's moving away from me so the magnetic field lines are clockwise if i use the right hand curl rule and when i am showing a dot for the current which means current is moving away from me i point my thumb right hand's thumb away from me and my fingers are going to show an anti clockwise magnetic field. Then you have a solenoid over here, and I'm showing the direction of current using the dot and cross model. So here it's coming out of the page, and here it's moving into the page. So this is how your direction of current actually is. This is how you'll actually understand what it means when I show the dots upwards and the crosses on the downside. So what becomes my north if I align my fingers in the direction of current? So then I can easily find my north, which is over here. And this is my south. So when I plot magnetic field lines, they're going to move from north to south. And inside the magnet, it's going to be from south to north. Again here, now we have current flowing in this manner. So it's flowing like this. If we again use the right hand grip rule and we align our right hand's fingers in this manner, so we're going to see that our north is pointing towards the right. Again, in a solenoid coil, we can see that the current is moving out of the page from here. So we are going to use dots over here and crosses over here. And if we align our fingers using the right hand rule, so we can see that the north is towards our left. Daily life applications of magnets and electromagnets are in loudspeakers, in circuit breakers, and in relays. And we're going to discuss them further in our other videos.